Okay, I'm going to interrupt the normal sequence of videoing because I want to take you on a sarcasm tour. Bible is very prophetic, but most of us are confused about its prophecy primarily because we do not know that the prophecies are all metered by syllable by year. And not only that, but the words that are used in the prophecy each one are very satirical almost every time now scholars have noticed the satire in the prophecies that they recognize but they have miscalculated so many of the prophecies that they sort of got tired of trying to talk about them most notably Daniel 9 which every scholar misaccounts every one of them whether it's preterist or it's this peak they use lunar years when they're reading Daniel 9.26. The Bible never uses lunar years. The Jews use lunar years. The Jews are wrong to use lunar years. The Bible is mandated to use solar years in Exodus 12 because Passover was Israel's birthday. You cannot hit your birthday every year if you use a lunar year. So because of mistakes like that, the extraordinary wit and gorgeous satire of the Bible goes missed century after century. Now I have to assume that the reason why we stumbled onto it now is because as part of this prophecy that I'm going to show or have already shown in Matthew 24 there are, Matthew 25 11 has two Courier references. Let me see if I can show it to you real quickly. Matthew 25 uh, well, 12 will take us close enough. See these two? The second courier, the first part of it, translated in English as Lord, one syllable. It's really two syllables in the Greek. That's 2017. Every other time these words are used, they stand for a massive, important find of scripture or teaching or a massive something new that was not known before that comes to light. This would have been 2015. Somebody found something in 2015. I don't know what. Okay, that was 2016. This is our year 2017. And it is mocking Trump. It's more particularly mocking the Seven Mountains movement behind Trump, which got started um, unfortunately up here this is when Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, all those jerks got started with their lie about pro-life. Bible says you're not human till you're born Genesis 2 7 you can even read it in English it's not hard. Follow the sequence okay but these guys wanted political power so they don't care if they lie against the Bible now that kind of duality of a massive apostasy like theirs and they support Trump now, have been since 2015, which is now marked here in black. Whenever you have that going, and, and the Bible starts its prophecy on this, going all the way back here. This is the first time Kurios is used. It's used as a keyword. Okay, it's referencing Wycliffe and Huss. The next time it's used here, it's ref referencing Zwingli, Erasmus, and Luther, because it's a one syllable per year. To just add 30 to these numbers to know what year it's talking about at that particular point. Here it's talking about Knox and Calvin and Beza. It's three syllables, three years, three people. Okay. Here it was talking about Charles I trying to undo people's interest in Bible. This was the King James in its first three editions. This is Charles I, son of James who wanted to go back to Catholicism and he was deposed and eventually beheaded for wanting that. This is the beginning of satire. The whole trend of a satir satirical fake messiah. Okay, and your next fake messiah, now he's using a keyword nufias instead. That was the, the whole war of the Austrian succession over who would marry Maria Therese. It's very hysterically funny that it's 
worded there because that's what the War of Austrian Succession was. Who's going to be the husband? Okay, and forget that little accent mark here. It doesn't belong. I, I, I don't know why when it pastes, it's always putting accent marks on the last syllable. There's something wrong with the paste. This is from Bible Works 9. Bible Works 9 does not have these little accent marks. They just add in the paste, and I don't know how to get rid of them. Okay, here, the Nymphias satire. See, because it's satire. It starts out being satire with Charles I, who gets beheaded up here. And then it keeps on being satire after that. Satire on who will husband the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, because that was the story with the Austrian succession. You can go look it up. Okay, here the story was who was going to um, husband, um, well this was the first the first thing with Joseph Smith. Okay, so this was 1783, this was 1813. This was the Joseph Smith thing and this was also right here. Let's pronounce this one syllable. Um, when um, Napoleon died. And a cult started up about him coming back like Messiah. I had no idea that was true, but you can find out about it. Um, uh, the little six-minute video in, in Amazon called uh, "False Messiahs," and that was one. I, and I, I, I was asking God about this. I said, "Why are you marking the year that Napoleon died? He's no trouble once he's dead. I mean, he was he was portrayed as a false messiah while he lived." But once he was dead, I thought it was all over. Well, I was wrong. That's, you can look that up in the history. I just didn't know about that history. So the satire against Napoleon, and that was Joseph Smith's first vision. This was also the first time that um, Tischendorf was finding manuscripts at St. Catherine's Monastery, which we call Aleph, which is one of our best manuscripts. Okay, here's the second time. It happens again. This was the main discovery of Aleph which is also called Codex Sinaiticus, but this was also the first time that Joseph Smith officially started to like have a movement, bowel movement, of Mormonism. Mormonism is just sheer claptrap. It's, it's, it's slapstick junk, like the Quran is. When you actually read it, it's like, what? Go read uh, 2 Nephi 4, or 1 Nephi 4, about how the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit mimics a dead person that he ordered Laban to kill, to murder. Would the Holy Spirit really do that? And then and then act like an Angostromuthas demon and talk with the dead man's voice in order to steal? Is that what the Holy Spirit would do? According to 1 Nephi 4, which is in the Book of Mormon, he would. So this is the, the guy who invented that junk, Joseph Smith. So that's, he's a false messiah. He's a false bridegroom. Of course, he he had to marry everybody and, and her sister. He had more wives than you know what to do with, just like Muhammad. Okay? The next use of Honum Fias is really pathetic. This is the start of the pro-life movement. The real bridegroom is Jesus Christ, and he's coming to you through good teaching. But they reject him, so they go after false Christs and false bridegrooms. And so, this is the, this was, I covered this in the 42nd video of this series. And, and while they were leaving to go by, the real bridegroom comes. In other words, the real scripture, and this was another discovery at St. Catherine's Monastery of more of Codex Sinaiticus this very, this very time. Okay, this is 1976. You have to add 30 to get to the A.D. And this is when, you know, Jerry Falwell Sr. and Pat Robertson and all those other disgusting jerks who pretend to be Christian. And maybe they're saved, but there's nothing they say that's Christian. That's when they started the pro-life movement so they could get political power. And they first tried to tap Richard Nixon, and then it was Ronald Reagan. And this, 1976, is when Ronald Reagan was first becoming, you know, a star of politics. It was during the convention over Gerald Ford, and they realized once they elected, they nominated Gerald Ford, they should have nominated Reagan. And he was catering to the whole pro-lifers, because it would get him elected. 
And then once he got elected, he ignored them, just like everybody else who, who who's they've gone after. Okay, so now they got Trump. Kyrie, oh, our Lord. And if you look at rightwingwatch.org, they're constantly, you know, billing Trump out as the anointed. And the word anointed means Christos. Christ means anointed. And they're so dumb they don't even know that. So Revelation 17 is against them. Okay. And in order to prove that it's that, that this is the right interpretation that I just gave you here, how do we know for sure that this is against Trump? Well, first of all, I just showed you all the prior uses of the same terms. So we know that it's a false Christ. And who's being billed out as the anointed? In their own words, you can just search on it, Seven Mountains in YouTube, or Seven Mountains in Google, or Ted Cruz anointed in YouTube, or Ted Cruz anointed in Google, or Donald Trump anointed in Google. It's always the same Christians. And they're the ones that are at the heads of all these communication organizations, Liberty University, and all other garbage. They're as apostate as it gets. They call themselves Seven Mountains. Others call them Dominionists. They think they'll bring Christ back if they win the White House, which they just did. This movement is really scary, and it's got a long precedence. And here, we're going to look at the same precedence and the same keyword kind of discovery in Revelation 17, which was written in 88 AD, not 96. Eusebius was the guy who came up with the idea of 96, and Eusebius wouldn't know straight up from straight down. He was one of the biggest liars that Christendom ever had. So, and one of these days I'm going to do videos to show you what a big liar he is, but all you have to do is read what he wrote. If anybody praises Eusebius, that person is a liar or cannot read. Okay. The Bible writers date in every chapter. The date when they're writing. And I've already done one John. I already did that in the, the John Dateline Meters PDF. It's also in HTM format and doc format. You can look it up yourself and test the Greek yourself. Okay. This how this is John's style. He's saying he's writing in the 19th year after the temple fell. And he's writing 19 years after Mark's gospel. All right. Because that's the job of the new writer. He's got to tag the older writer to say how much later than that other writer he writes. And John is particularly assiduous about that. Okay, so now watch. He's got textual puns that he makes. Alright, here's the first one. And I already covered this in previous videos on Mark 13. Okay, or no, the first Revelation 17 video. Legon. That ends at meter 29. You have to add 88 to convert to RAD because he's writing in 88 AD. 29 plus 88 puts you at 117. Okay? 117 AD was the year that Trajan died. So to end it with Legon is a witty and sarcastic and kind of sad comment on how Trajan died because what happened was his wife Plotina or Faustina I forget I get those names always mixed up said that Trajan was saying see that's what Lego means Lego means saying it's a participle Lego was saying that he was saying that he wanted Hadrian to be his heir because he didn't have any kids and it was a big brouhaha in Rome because they thought that Plotina Trajan's wife was in love with Hadrian and just wanted him to be emperor next now this is written in 88 this isn't written in 117 okay there's no way that they could know the, the gossip that was going on with Trajan when he died all right, and it's the angel talking. It's not John. It's the angel talking. The angel would know. I mean, you know, because Christ gives you whatever knowledge you need. 
in whatever capacity you are. So do roll. Come here. Just like what he said to Lazarus. Do roll. Exo. Come here. Outside. That's what Christ said to Lazarus. Do roll. Come here. So at the do, which is stands for 118, Hadrian is getting a notice from Rome saying to come here. Hadrian was in Syria at the time. And that kind of satire continues. Alright? So what I decided to do, it's so frequent that I thought, well, okay, since it's always about emperors or something related to emperors, I'll put it in purple. Alright? It's kind of disgusting, you know, that it's so busy, the text, but I don't know how else to do it. If you can think of a better way, let me know. And then in each one of these underlines is a link to an external or the set of external links that I put in my other document where you can read what scholars have said about these periods so you can know that I'm not making up what I'm telling you all right I really want you to learn how to do this for yourself I'm not interested in selling you on it I'm interested in showing you the methodology so that you can see it for yourself because God's will for your life is that you develop spiritually and you cannot develop spiritually on hearsay you have to go to the source material. So that's what I'm trying to provide is the source material. And then I show you the methodology. So before the Lord, using 1 John 1, 9, you can do this yourself. And therefore grow faster. Because we don't have good teaching of Bible anymore. You still should be under a pastor. Only a male, never a female. But then what do you do with the Bible that you're learning? You have to give it a workout. And that's what this kind of stuff will help you do. All right. So then we get down to our next our next satire. And this is the death of Marcus Aurelius. Okay? And he dies at the beginning. See this is 91 plus 88. See here's how you do it. Again, I want you to learn how to do this, not just not take my word for it. Okay? 91 is the benchmark and he's I'll talk about that in a minute. 91 plus 88 that converts it to AD 179 so at the 91 marker okay um, it's 179 okay but Marcus Aurelius dies in 180 I think I calculated that wrong Marcus Aurelius dies right here yeah I calculated that wrong. I'm going to have to fix this. He's not Ek from this world yet. He dies in 180 as Kai. Now that's hysterical because in Latin, the word for king is Kaiser, just like it is in German, just like it is in a lot of languages. And since he's cut out of this world, he's truncated to Kai. And you say, oh, Brain, now how do you know that that's how it's being done? Because it's done repeatedly. And I'm going to fix this and come back in the next video and I'll explain more about that in a minute.